In this tutorial, we're going to be showing you how to add annotations to a JavaScript chart using SciChart.js. The Annotations API is a powerful API that allows you to add lines, boxes, text labels, or custom shapes onto a JavaScript chart. We're going to start off by using our boilerplate example for a new application with SciChart.js, and you can find this at github.com slash abt software slash SciChart.js examples under Tutorials, 2D Chart Tutorials, and Tutorial number 1. If you've already got this, you'll see that the example looks something like this, where you have an index.html, a div with the ID SciChart root, and in index.js, we call the function SciChart surface create, passing in the same div ID. We add a single X and Y axis to the chart, and if you run npm install and npm start, you should end up with something like this, a blank chart with a single X and Y axis on it. We're going to add some annotations to this chart now to show you how to use this API. So the first annotation I'm going to add is the line annotation. And you do this by declaring a new line annotation and adding it to the SciChart Surface Annotations collection. Don't forget to import line annotation, and you can find this in SciChart Charting Visuals Annotations namespace. So I've given this annotation some coordinates. We've got x1, y1 is 1, 6, and x2, y2 is 4, 9. And you can see that that corresponds to the data coordinates on the chart. The wonderful thing about the annotations API is that these annotations are fixed to the data points. So if I add some chart modifiers for zooming and panning that we've covered in previous tutorials, you'll see that the annotations actually move as you zoom and pan the chart. So what else can you do with this API? Well, there are some obvious things you can do, like you could change the stroke on the line, or you could change the stroke thickness. And you could also change the coordinates if you wanted. But there's also another API, which is the coordinate mode. And this one is very useful, and we'll explain a little bit more about it later. But in short, if I were to set the X coordinate mode, and I set this to E coordinate mode dot relative, making sure that I import E coordinate mode from SciChart charting visuals annotations, then now the annotation obeys a factor from zero to one. So zero would be the left uh, left hand edge of the viewport, and one would be the right hand edge of the viewport. So you can see this annotation is now always stretched to fit. And when I zoom and I pan around, it's always stretching to fit the left and right edges of the viewport. There's also a coordinate mode pixel. So if I were to specify 0 and 100, then my annotation would stretch from pixels 0 to 100 on the x-axis only. Again, as I zoom and pan around, you can see that it is always in the same place. The default mode is data value. So for data value, the annotation obeys actual data values on the axis, and it's bound to those points, and as you zoom and scroll the chart, the annotation will move with it. So what else can the annotations API do? Well, you can also add boxes or rectangles to the chart, and we can do that by first importing box annotation from charting visuals annotations, and then creating a new box annotation and adding it to the SciChart Surface Annotations collection like we did before. You can see that the declaration of box annotation is very similar to a line annotation. We can set the stroke, stroke thickness, and fill. Stroke and fill support HTML color code, so you can set a hex code or you can set a code like this one, uh, as you would in CSS and the coordinates are by default data coordinates. You'll see that the box actually zooms and pans with the chart as you move it around. But what if you wanted to have a stretched box? You wanted to have a box that was always stretched from the left to right or the top to bottom. Now you could use the coordinate mode. So I would set my x coordinate mode equal to e coordinate mode dot relative. And then I would want to set the x1 and x2 values to 0 and 1 respectively. That would stretch the annotation horizontally across the viewport. 
and now it will always be stretched as you zoom and pan. Similarly, if you wanted to have the uh, box stretched vertically, what you would do is you would set the Y coordinate mode. So this time I'm going to set the Y coordinate mode to relative and the Y1 and y uh, Y2 to 0 and 1 respectively. There we go. Now the annotation is stretched vertically. So the box annotation is very, very useful in order to display regions of interest on the chart. The next annotation type we're going to add to the chart is the text annotation. So we declare this how we've declared other annotation types. We want to create a new text annotation and we want to add it to the side chart surface annotations collection. Make sure that you've imported text annotation from side chart, charting, visuals, annotations. Now the text annotation only obeys a single X and Y coordinate. It won't obey X1, X2, Y1, Y2, so you don't need to define a box for it. By default, this coordinate is the top left of the annotation, but you can actually change where that annotation coordinate is using the anchor point properties. So these are found here, the horizontal anchor point and the vertical anchor point, and you will also need to import uh, E vertical anchor point and E horizontal anchor point from side chart types anchor point. And once you've done that, you'll be able to position the annotation so that the control point is in the center or the right or the left or the top or the bottom. For example, if you wanted to create an annotation that was placed in the middle of the screen, but it looked a little bit like a watermark, what you'd probably do is set something like this. This annotation is always placed in the center of the chart, no matter where I zoom or scroll or pan around, because it uses X and Y coordinate mode relative, with an X1, Y1 value of 0 0.5, and there's a center anchor point for horizontal and vertical anchor point. The last annotation type we want to discuss is the custom annotation. This allows you to place any SVG on the chart, so you can use it to place custom markers or shapes or images on a side chart surface. Go ahead and import custom annotation from side chart, charting, visuals, annotations, custom annotation. Next, we want to declare our custom annotation, and we do this in a similar way to how we have done before. We create a new custom annotation, we pass in the X1 and Y1 coordinate, and we can optionally set its horizontal and vertical anchor point. However, this annotation type also accepts an SVG string. So this has to be some kind of valid SVG uh, according to the W3C specification, and we will place this on the chart. So this is how the SVG annotation looks. Like the other annotations, it obeys X and Y coordinate mode. By default, it's set to data value, which means that the marker or the annotation zooms and pans with the chart. There are some further examples of the SciChart.js annotations API at demo.scichart.com. You can find these under the category 2D charts, chart annotations, and JavaScript chart annotations. In this example, we've created a number of annotations, including text, lines, SVG, boxes, watermarks, and custom shapes like these buy and sell markers. There's also a more in-depth application showing what annotations can do and how useful this is in the trading buy sell marker annotations example. In this one, we create a number of buy and sell arrows and we place those on the chart as well as the sort of news bullet which use the coordinate mode relative to dock them to the bottom of the chart. 